Hey everyone, this is the Gee Pan here, Brandon Cads, with another video. This time it's my tips for PAX East 2023. Now, I made uh, tips for PAX East 2022, which helped out a good amount of people, but I need to update some information. And hopefully, you know, with this year's video, uh, these tips are a collection of not only mine, but others' input as well. Also, if you have any tips yourself, post it out right down there in the comment box. Let's help out as many people as we can. These are aimed to provide a good head start to you know for everyone whether you're a first time attendee or a pax east veteran hopefully some of these tips will help you out or help you remember something of either what to bring what to do all that dandy stuff this is going to be separated into two different parts the first part is basically the pre-setup and day zero aka wednesday the day before the convention so uh, first up, badges are still available, though Sunday passes have been sold out. Fridays and four-day passes are running low, so if you plan on going all four days, I recommend picking up a four-day badge now. Uh, Thursdays and Sundays are still good, but again, I highly recommend grabbing them now, you know, before they might, you know, sell out. Because I I, I won't be surprised if the Fridays and uh, four-day passes sells out before PAX East. I also recommend joining, you know, some of the official communities out there for PAX, whether it be the official PAX Discord, the Reddit, or the forums, which I'll post down there in the description box. There's going to be a lot of things posted down there, so that'll help you out. So, Now, uh, this is a big note. Uh, I just want to point this out because last year I said you could do it, but the Convention Center is really becoming strict about this, so I just want to point it out for now. The Convention Center has a very, very strict outside food policy. Basically, what I mean is they don't want any outside food. Whether it be Mickey D's, you know, McDonald's, Chinese food, sushi. They don't want outside food. The only food that is allowed is either the convention food itself or the food trucks in the lawn D. If even coffee, I've been told trying to bring in Dunkin' Donuts coffee is literally an uphill battle, basically. So, yeah, I just want to point it out there. Uh, I will point this out in the second video and go more into detail about it, but just, yeah, no outside food at all in the convention center. Second note, have a checklist. It helps out a lot and shows what you're bringing, and try not to bring everything under the sun, unless you have a vehicle and you can do that, so by all means. But if you're taking, like, a plane, train, or a bus, just, yeah, just... Just uh, pack what you need and have some spare space in case for stuff like free swag and um, stuff that you plan on buying. So, all right, now what to bring. All right, so here is basically a list of supplies I like to bring for a convention. Some of it is pretty standard. Other stuff is my own personal take on it. So first and foremost, your badges. Now, if you receive your badge in the mail, please don't forget your badge. Just have it in a safe split uh, place. Don't forget it. All that dandy stuff. Now, if you didn't receive your badge, you can pick it up at will call, especially for those who are coming in for internationally, media and content creators, exhibitors. And if you did buy your badge before the cutoff date and still haven't received it, talk to support. Uh, nine times out of ten, it's basically just pick it up at will call. Face masks. The uh, PAX East and the Convention Center this year are not requiring vaccinations or negative test proof. They do, however, require a mandatory face mask policy. Uh, go in the description box below to see what face masks are allowed. Next up, personal hygienic items. I... You think? Years and years of talking about the confunk and all that stuff would get more people in line to be like, hey, it's good to stay clean and fresh. No, I have to hammer it in all the Danny stuff. So please bring stuff like soap, deodorant, toothbrush, toothpaste, travel, you know, travel size hand sanitizer, um, foam or gel insoles for your shoes. They will help out so much. Comfort is key. If uh, nine times out of 10, if you're bringing your shoes and they're pretty worn out, yeah, I would recommend getting either the cheap $2, $1, $2 foam insoles, especially the double padded ones, or the gel ones. They will make they will make it so much more comfortable throughout the convention center, which also, if you're bringing new shoes, break them in before the convention, not during, just a heads up. I also recommend bringing in some hand lotion. Um, again, also uh, personal hygienic items and all that dandy stuff, again, is very important. Now, I know that the hotel, if you're staying in a hotel, has some items already, but if you have a group of friends, the soap ain't gonna last too long and all that dandy stuff, so bring your own. And if you're saying Panda, they cost a lot of money, you can go to a dollar store and buy the travel size one. You're only gonna be there for four days max, you know, maybe five. You know, those things should last you all four days, you know, and they're ch relatively cheap too. You could buy like a soap bar for like a dollar, dollar fifty. 
and it's like cheap one dollar toothbrush toothpaste all that dandy stuff so they're i literally went out and it's like i at less than like ten dollars i bought everything that i need not even that i i almost pushed it down to like five or six so uh over the counter um medication and prescription meds that you need now uh having over the counter uh meds like ibuprofen and tylenol i do recommend them bringing but bring your prescription meds is very important just because you think i'm gonna be fine i don't need them no bring them please it's they're prescribed to you by a doctor just bring them there has been too many situations uh, at conventions that i've seen people go to the hospital because either they forgot their meds or they didn't they thought they felt good and they didn't, didn't need to take their meds and they had to go to an ambulance and you know to go to the hospital so avoid paying a hefty ambulance bill it's not cheap the vitamins is also really uh good to have comes in clutch especially one of those monthly vitamins to help give you like a boost for your day with energy or a vitamin c boost as well cosplays uh have a checklist basically of ensuring what you're going to be packing be mindful of how you store your cosplay for transport again having a vehicle helps out a lot but taking it on a plane yeah you're gonna have to try to improvise certain things and stuff like that uh, try to pack it, you know, well, reasonably well, you know, um, you know, like a uh, bubble wrap, bubble wrap is awesome or something like that. Just have a checklist, bring your cosplays, what you need. Now, a power strip for the hotel room. I guarantee you, you're going to need at least one or two because if, especially if you're with friends, yeah, those plug, every plug in the room is going to be filled up with someone's phone or laptop or Nintendo switch or something. So bring a spare power strip, basically. Uh, also, on top of that, spare chargers, spare charging cables, rechargeable portable batteries for your cell phone electronics. Those portable batteries helps out a lot. Like mine can charge up my phone like two to three times before it dies out. And having some spare, your spare chargers and charging cables, you know, will help out a lot as well. So in case if you've lost your original one, you got your backup one, basically. Please don't be uh, people that bring only one pair of clothes and just make it last throughout the day. Even if you take a shower daily, your clothes are dirty and it doesn't do much, basically. So, yeah, bring some spare clothes. Now, I highly recommend bringing multiple pairs of socks and underwear for each day. Uh, two pairs of socks, two pairs of underwear. Because if you're going all the convention all day... And you want to go out at night take a shower you know put on some fresh clothes fresh underwear fresh socks it'll help out a lot basically also because this is new england weather could be pretty crazy one day it could be sunny the next snowing the next rain and the next day after that sunny again so have some more clothes like a jacket or a coat and uh bring an umbrella just in case because last time i checked for the weather it was going to be raining for most of the pax east weekend uh other than that spare pillow and sleeping bag again if you're grouping up with friends in the hotel room it's always good to bring spares because i know that hotels will have usually a stockpile of extra pillows and blankets but everyone's going to be asking for pillows and blankets so they're going to go out pretty quickly so uh just bring your own helps out a lot also what helps out too is bring your own spare towel so just a heads up uh water bottle yeah if you have a refillable water bottle you know either from like a cheap you know these things to an actual water bottle thing bring it hydration is key water there is free refill up your water bottle you don't want to be dehydrated it fucking sucks now, if you plan on playing a lot of the tabletop uh, collectible card games and all that nanny stuff, uh, of course, bring your decks. You know, there's going to be there's a lot of tabletop and collectible card games going on over there, especially with stuff like Magic and D&D. So bring your spare dice, bring some pen and paper, books as needed, character lists, all that nanny stuff. So, but overall, that's pretty much a solid list of what to bring. Again, post down in the comment box to see what I miss and what your take and tips on it as well. So, next up travel situations all right the travel situation now there's four different kinds of travel to go to pax east in boston uh you got driving you got plane you got train and you got bus unless you literally take a cab there or you walk there because you are legitimately that close which you're really 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 lucky so uh first up uh if you have tickets especially for a plane a train or a bus make sure you bring them sometimes your ticket could be on your phone make sure you like what i usually have to do i download the pdf file so it's on my phone ready to go in case if the internet connection is bad make sure you turn your uh, phone brightness up so they can scan it and you're pretty much good to go so just don't forget your tickets at times you can get you print out your tickets you know there at the uh, airport or the bus station or the or the train station in case if you lose it right then and there but just don't forget your tickets now first up 
Driving. Uh, you want to set up your ideal route uh, with a with your GPS. Now there are multiple ways to get to Boston, depending on where you live. Basically, either northwest or south. Um, New England area it's pretty straightforward. If you're coming in from the south, I-95, pretty much. But I-95 is either crazy or just bumper to bumper. There is literally no in between. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> But also take note of tolls here. Um, a lot of times the tolls are done via camera and mail anyways, which what I mean is when you drive, there's a camera that takes a picture of your license plate and whoever's name is on that plate, it just, there's a ticket that gets mailed to your house and you have to pay it off within like a month or they're gonna start charging extra basically. Really important, ensure your vehicle is ready for the trip. That includes full gas tank, ensure your vehicle is safe to drive, Every, like a vehicle checkup, oil change, check your tires, check your tire pressure, all that dandy stuff. I also recommend having spare tools just in case. Again, God forbid, if you have a, a flat tire that you can change out with a spare real quick, or if you need to jump your vehicle, you got jumper cables, all that dandy stuff. If you have AAA, make sure you have a card on you and you have to have that uh, phone out the ready just in case whatever happens. Now, if you bring in a lot of friends, make sure I do a bag limit with each of them, depending on, you know, how many people are and what kind of vehicle you have, because you don't want to be packed in there like Tetris and in like a sardine, you know, can situation. Just, just be mindful. Have also portable chargers or a, a charge cable ready uh especially if your phone has gp is the one that has gps look for daily weather reports and updates just in case something happens now this includes for everything a bad weather can influence your travel arrangements whether you drive fly train or bus so check daily because it changes daily new england weather can be very unpredictable like here we're supposed to be getting really bad weather and snow but for us in particular no it's I, we're, we're like on the edge of the storm the storm went more north so yeah uh, if you have friends, of course, share the gas bill, share the parking bill, share the tolls. If you have uh, garbage, have a scented garbage bag. Helps out a lot to double bag it in case, you know, if something leaks, you'll thank me later. Also, just stay safe out there. Uh, New England drivers, we can be very notorious, and it goes by a state-by-state -state situation. I wouldn't piss off the state troopers. Um, yeah. <laughs> Some states, they're more pissed off than others, so I don't want to piss them off, so yeah. Now we go for plane travel. Now, prices can vary depending on the airline, which if you haven't bought your ticket yet, you really should have bought your ticket. I don't know. I want you to stop this video, go buy your ticket right now, get it done and over with, but look into the bag carry-on and the check-in policy, see if you can check in your bags for free and carry on your bags for free, because some airlines might charge you extra regardless, so just... Be mindful of that. Uh, best recommendation, arrive an hour to two hours early just because of airport security, especially if it's an international airport. And have something identifiable on your check-in bag with baggage, baggage claim because sometimes a lot of people have the same bags that they carry and travel. So having something like a keychain, a name tag, or a nameplate or something like that, it'll help identify it a lot easier during baggage claim. Also, airports, food is expensive, so just be mindful of that. Taking the train, reserve your ticket early for better pricing. Again, if you haven't gotten your ticket, no, you really need to stop this video and get your ticket for the train right now. You know, it, 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 like I got my ticket for 30 bucks round trip from where I live, but and then now the price is like double to triple that. So get your ticket right now. Uh, for train, I usually arrive 30 to 45 minutes beforehand. No, trains can be a little late. They'll give you a heads up usually. Uh, make note of how many bags you can do carry-on for. Um, again, you don't want a lot of bags to bring with you or else it's going to be really... Yeah, I I have a gut feeling the train going up to Boston is going to be really packed. So, I yeah, bring what you need, basically. Also, uh, the trains are nice because they have uh, USB ports and electric uh, outlets there at your seat usually. So you can at least charge up your stuff on the train ride up. Now, if this is the first time taking the train again, uh, have your ticket ready when you sit down on the train, but there are different train cars. You get the regular one, you get the quiet car, you get the snack car, and you get the business car. The regular one, pretty self said you can talk, you can chill, you can hang out with your friends, talk, and all that dandy stuff. You got the quiet car, which a regular ticket you can be in, but like it says, just stay quiet or minimal volume as possible. So if you're listening to music, headphones, don't try to make any phone calls, stuff like that. Snack car is usually located in the middle, I believe, and as the name suggests, it, you can buy snacks and stuff in there. It can be a little pricey, all that dandy stuff. Um, and the business class car, which it does have a specific ticket for it. So if you do have business class, hey, 
you'd stay in the business class if you don't the train conductor will just tell you hey go to another car basically um there are bathrooms that are usually located on the ends of the train car and just you know just it's gonna be pretty packed uh nine times out of ten there's gonna be a lot of people excited for pax east which if you're taking the amtrak up you might see me <laughs> you might actually see me there on the train cars uh being excited too so i uh last uh earlier when i went to pax east when we took the train there was a lot of people going to pax east so uh also um other than that the bus is the final thing same situation arrive 30 to 45 minutes early make note of the carry-on bags make sure you have your ticket ready if it is a long trip the bus will take break stops at certain areas for like uh like strip malls and stuff like that for food go use the bathroom there all that dandy stuff um i recommend using the bathroom at the um when you take a stop there's like a 30 there's like a 30 minute timer or something like that that they do you listen to the bus driver he'll say be back here at the at, at the bus at this time because they're not gonna wait for you they're gonna leave so you don't want to be stuck there so just go out get a bite to eat use the bathroom real quick get back on the bus that is it, it is simple you're good to go um but yeah it's pretty much it again just make sure you have your tickets ready and before you leave whether you be driving taking the bus the train or flying use the bathroom before you go you will thank me go number one go number two just use the bathroom don't be oh i can do it during the plane or just just use the bathroom before you go pretty easy and simple you don't want to be driving up and then one of your buddies is like oh we, uh, you know 10 to 20 minutes later oh, i gotta use the bathroom like you just literally started like we had a we had a thing going on we had we had the hype going on and that just killed our mojo basically so just use the bathroom now we are going to hotels if you reserved early awesome you have a hotel room. if you don't um they're actually running out i recommend getting a hotel right now if you haven't had one already so yeah um pretty much it in a nutshell so if you already got your hotel, congrats. There's a lot of local options that people like to do, whether it be the Westin, the Omni, the Aloft, the Elemental, the Residence in Marriott Seaport, which is a quick five to 10 minute walk away. Uh, basically do your research. How far is the hotel away from the convention center? Does the hotel offer a shuttle bus service? Um, also, what amenities do they have to offer as well? Like the Residence in Marriott Seaport, they have free breakfast, which is really, really awesome. I love being that hotel but I wanted something really, really uh, closer. But if you're in that hotel, staff is great. Staff is awesome, but the free breakfast is on point. Uh, what kind of food options do you have nearby? Does the room have any kitchen stuff like a microwave or a mini fridge or an actual fridge? It all really depends, you know, but food options, like what are the nearest uh, fast food restaurant, uh, fast food places, restaurants, packies, AKA uh, liquor stores. Uh, so if you have someone say packies or packaged store, we mean liquor stores. That's how we, uh, that's why we call them in New England, just get used to it. And certain hotels will offer shuttle bus services to and from the uh, uh, convention center. Uh, so either ask the hotel itself if they do offer it. I don't think they post that information on the website itself for PAX East, but yeah. If you have roommates, set up a pay system. Uh, best two scenarios, either pay early to secure your space and you can pay, you know, meet up with your friend early to give them the cash or just PayPal or Venmo it or cash app or just pay when you arrive it just really depends but just ensure people pay so also look into stocking up your room with the basic of basic supplies you don't have to live like a lavish lifestyle but just something basic water soda alcohol snacks power strip again this is where it comes in clutch bring one or two depending on how many people are going because again it everyone it'll fill up pretty quickly uh, my personal extras, I like to bring garbage bags, especially the scented ones. Uh, the hotel staff would love you for this. I usually like to keep my room clean and on point, so after we eat, we throw our food in the garbage bags. I wrap them up. I, I might even just double bag them, and I just leave it right outside the door, basically, and the uh, housekeeping will just pick it up and just throw it away. It's really quick, really easy, really simple. I also like to bring a bottle of hand uh, hand wash uh, for the hotel room. Um, the little soap bar ain't gonna last, especially if it's like more than two people. So having the bottle or two right there, you can buy them for cheap, a dollar or two. It just it's a nice little thing. Disinfectant spray can uh, can be very useful, useful, especially if you have 
cosplays. Uh, disinfectant clothing specific sprays will help out. Disinfecting your shoes. Uh, what I mean is inside your shoes because your feet sweat and it's going to stink. So having a quick spray in there helps out a lot, basically. Also, what I like to do is get those really cheap $1 room scented stand things, basically. You know, the $1 things. It, I, I just like to have my room, room smelling nice and clean. Uh, also, big thing, utilize the hotel closet to store your bags, the drawers, the you know, every, you know, everything basically it just it it helps out with the space issue especially if you've got a lot of people staying in your room which hopefully doesn't break the hotel policy i know you're out there but just just clear up this clutter basically uh personal preference check in a day early and leave in a day later it might cost you extra but it makes the trip oh so much easier you check in a day early you get things sorted you're in the room no rush you can chill and just hang out with friends or people in the west end Usually there's stuff going on, like it's a, a lobby con. The West End Hotel Lobby is a lobby con, especially on like, you know, nighttime. So Wednesday night, board games, all that dining stuff. Great place to hang out. Uh, leave a day later on Monday, no rush. Sunday night, you can get that awesome eight hour plus sleep that you deserve. So now, other personal preferences. I don't usually like to have maids come in my room specifically, you know, because again, we have a lot of potentially expensive equipment in there, whether it be our Nintendo Switches, laptops and all that danny stuff so i do put the sign there like no clean service needed unless something happens or you know we just need to do a quick clean real quick so but what i usually do is i usually order extra towels for the room extra toilet paper and other stuff that we really need so and that's pretty much about it for the hotel just uh make note that uh, at a certain point at night, just try not to make too much noise. Hotel's gonna warn you and all that dainty stuff. But again, I'll talk about this more during part two. But this is all basically all the basics that you need. So you should be all set with that. All right, last but not least, taxis and food delivery services and other info that you might need. So uh, a link to the public services uh, will be in the description box below via the BCEC Convention Center website. But Boston does have their own taxi service out there. If you're staying in a hotel, you can call to ask for a cab or just wave them down on the street. You know, it's pretty much easy and basic. Of course, you'll have your uh, apps like Uber and Lyft and all that dandy stuff. Now, do know, prices can be more expensive and it also varies by the hour, by the minute. I literally had a situation on Uber where it would have cost me a bit more, but I literally waited five minutes and the price just dropped down. I'm like, oh, sweet. So... Just uh, make note of that. There are a couple of food delivery options for you if you're staying in a hotel in Boston. Now, some restaurants will have their own delivery service like Domino's. Other restaurants will heavily rely on Uber Eats, DoorDash, all that stuff. So again, look at the app for deals or promotions to help you save money. It can be potentially pricey. The thing that I like about apps like Uber Eats is that you you know not only can you order food like for you know deliveries, but you can also order groceries and alcohol to your hotel room. So make sure you look in on that. If you are using these apps, I highly recommend putting in your hotel room information so you can at least start planning out what restaurants you like to order food from, any local grocery stores and stuff like that, and everything else in between. Uh, other information uh, that I like to point out is download the PAX East app and start scheduling for any panels or events you want to go to. Make note of the map. The after parties for PAX East are still being announced, and so just make sure you keep your eye out. The Marooners Rock is a great website that has a lot of up-to-date information on, you know, announcements of after parties and all that. And this year, sadly, the Acer after party is not going to be there. They're not doing it this year. Kind of sucks because it's literally the highlight of my PAX East for the nighttime party life. So, but yeah, we finally made it at the end of it. We talked about all the basics, the, the pre-setup, the day zero of coming in, checking into your hotel room. Also, I forgot, checking times for your hotel. Usually in the afternoon around like one to four, but if the room is available, you can check in immediately. But other than that, please stay safe out there. Make sure you dress appropriately for the weather, all that dandy stuff. Hopefully you all have a safe trip. And again, if there's any tips uh, the app that I didn't include or you'd like to point out, please post it right down there in the comment box below. My next video, part two, will talk about the convention itself, food, all that dandy stuff. 
So thank you all so much for coming in. I honestly can't wait for this convention. This is going to be my eighth PAX East, and I originally started going to this back in 2012, but I missed a few conventions here and there. But but no, this year will be my eighth one, and I cannot wait. So hopefully I'll see you all there. And above all else, keep being awesome, keep being safe. If you guys enjoyed this video, uh, hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I do have a Discord that you can join in and hype up for PAX East as well. I do stream weekly on YouTube and Twitch, and above all else, yeah, no, that's pretty much it. Thank you all so much for coming in. This is Geek Pan here. I'm out. Stay geeky, my friends.